Hey there YouTube welcome to part two of the video we're doing on a make your own gear pack that was made sometime between 1909 and 1918 and that was included with a package that my buddy Nathan uh, had delivered when he purchased his compact tent uh, made at about the same time uh, this is a fairly simple project. Doesn't take much at all to make it. The tools you're going to need are a pair of scissors or a knife, a palm protector like this or one you make yourself like this one here. I got a little bit of information later on in the video on that. You also need to take your sewing kit and get you a BFN. Okay. And last but not least, you will need this. Yes, you'll need your seam ripper, but not because you screwed up. Now that's of course in addition to that sewing machine I talked you into, and you're not going to need to use that all that much. For materials, you need a sea bag or some other kind of duffel bag. This one comes from Rothko. It costs I found them anywhere from $21 to $29. All of the material, all of the fabric you need will come from that bag. So that's all you need to purchase there. Now, you should always have on hand some wax thread for your vintage make your own gear projects. And some hemp or jute rope. You're going to make for this project two wood blocks with holes in them. I know, it's real complicated stuff. And then nuts! You need some nuts. Okay, the original bag used acorns in the lower corners of the bag, as you noted in that first video. Uh, down here in Texas, acorns don't grow that big. So, acorns and nuts, and I, I got some nuts. One of the reasons why I got them is there's no sharp edges on this. It's, they're all nice and rounded. Uh, on the edges, so we're not going to cut the fabric at all. Okay? That's all you need. Now let's show you how we put it together. <clears throat> Forgot to mention, uh, you're going to need some steel or brass rings about a half inch diameter. These are what I got. And you will also need the other sewing machine. Okay, now let's get on with Okay, so here's what I've done so far. I, I washed the bag after removing the rope. Then I took the dreaded tool. And I removed all the stitching from the bottom. It's kind of a chore because it is held together with this tape. So you got a little bit of extra uh, work to do. You can save this if you want. If you're like me, an old man who... It's a cheap SOB. But anyway, you can save this. The next, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to iron both of these. 
for the uh, bottom of the bag, we're going to fold it in half and then iron it flat and I'll show you what we do with that next. For the bag itself, we're going to uh, iron it flat, but we're going to make sure that this seam that is sewed down the length is three or four inches away from the edge or running down the very center of the bag when it's laid flat. We'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to see if I can knock over another camera in another video with my T-square. I'm going to take that piece that I folded in half and ironed, and I've said before that most camping gear is a bag of some sort, and that's what our straps are going to be. To make a two inch wide shoulder strap, we're going to come over here and we're going to measure about four and a half, four and a quarter inches. Okay, and we're going to do that down here as well, just so we can be consistent. And then I'm going to connect those lines. Now we have a pencil line that is parallel to the fold line, and I'm just going to cut along that line. Okay, so far I haven't knocked the camera over. Now what I've got now is after cutting along my pencil line and cutting along the fold line, I end up with two pieces that are the same length. Now what I'm going to do to make the straps is I'm going to fold both of these in half, and sew along this line. And then when I'm done, I'm going to cut it at the end. And then I'm going to turn it inside out. We'll show you that here. Okay, so here we have a before and after of the shoulder straps that we made out of the bottom of the duffel bag. Before, all I did was I came in, I stitched along one side, and then here at the top, to make turning it right side out a little bit easier, I only sewed in the center, leaving about a finger's width on either side for a hole. It's going to make it a little bit easier. I'll show you that here in a minute. Now, because we can't, it's, it's difficult to sew with the machine through four layers of fabric. We went ahead and hand stitched this uh, with some waxed thread. And to give you a, a little tip here, when you're stitching through thick pieces of fabric like this, you can either go out and buy one of these, which fits on your hand, like so, and you can push the end of your needle with the heel of your hand. Makes it a little bit easier. Or, you can make one of these. What it is, is it's a couple pieces of flour sack cloth that I had folded over and sewn together with some Velcro. And I just Velcro that to my hand and I can push that needle through with the heel of my hand like so. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is take this end that you've got sewed and you want to grab on the side, okay, 90 degrees to the line of your stitching and pull it out. Can you see that? Then you want to try to start stuffing the edges and corners down inside. This is arguably the most difficult part of this project. So what you're forming there is a little dimple. Okay, and you are going to use 
a piece of dowel rod and push it in that dimple and then start working this until it turns right side out. It takes a little bit of work. It's even more difficult when you're trying to do it in a camera close-up. Trust me, it can be done. This in here proves that it can be done. Just use some strong language. Okay, plan B. And here's why we need a plan B. What we have here is two broken and one bent needle. And that happened after stitching a little bit more than halfway on this bag, which meant I was likely to break or bend at least one or two more needles. So what I did was is I took the seam ripper, tore it all apart, and then I just simply laid it flat and ran a line of stitching and made this like a regular old stuff sack. We'll turn it right side out and it should work just fine. Okay, pay no attention to what that old man just told you. Okay, after subsequent sewing through two layers of fabric instead of four, I still broke a needle. The problem was with my sewing machine. It's in the shop right now. Luckily, I had a backup to finish the project. All I really needed to do was run those parallel lines of stitching down the length of the, the shoulder straps. I went ahead and hand sewed them uh, where they go around the rope just to be consistent. But otherwise, your old Singer machine is up to this task. Okay, so uh, here's where we are now. We're just about finished. You can see what I've done is, is I've put the shoulder straps onto a rope that has been passed through these brass rings just as they did on the original. Uh, you can see where I've made parallel lines of stitching on the shoulder strap. Okay, now if you feel cheated that you didn't see me, see any video of, of me sewing this, here's five seconds of me sewing. Okay, I also whipped both ends of this rope. This rope is a little bit bigger than it needs to be to go all the way around the bag so that I can open the bag up a little bit more. I may need to adjust that after I've worn the pack a little bit. I whipped both ends and I put a stopper knot on both of them where the original had a stopper knot on only one. Uh, I may need to cut that and readjust it. Now all that needs now is to take these nuts and put them into the bottom of the bag, run a rope around it, tie it tight, and then run that rope through your wooden block that's going to serve as your guy line temperature, uh, tensioner through the loop at this end of the shoulder strap, through here, and tie a stopper knot at the end. Okay, again, all that's going to need a little bit of adjustment after I've worn it. Let's see what it looks like when we're finished. Okay, so here it is. Uh, we're about 99% finished. Still a bit of tweaking to do. Uh, when you pass your rope through your wooden block here, it is useful to put some masking tape around the ends. Okay, uh, the original did not whip his ends, so rather than, uh, there's a quarter inch diameter hole here and this is quarter inch diameter rope. I measured it on the original. Okay, he wanted it to be uh, had some friction in there. 
okay? So just put a little bit of masking tape on here and you'll be able to shape it. You gotta twist it and push it. It'll take you a bit, but you can you can get it done. But if you look now, you can you can adjust your uh, the length of your strap by moving this up and down the same way you would uh, if you were putting up your tent. Now at the top, I'll tell you I should not have wicked my ends first. Uh, that's because when I put it on. Uh, it sagged a lot because of the length of this rope. I wasn't quite sure how long the rope should be. So I had to kind of reach behind me and grab that rope and pull it up until it felt right. Okay, and you can see here, uh, this is the original knot that I had when I put the rope on, but now I'm knotted down here. So. I'm not going to take any of this apart yet until I've got it tweaked. You're going to have to do the same thing, okay? Once you get the basic thing up, once you get these nuts in here and tied this up, just don't, don't dress anything up right away. Put a load in it, get it to where you, you know, put it on, get it to where it's comfortable, then cut the ends of the lines with them. Uh, or however you want to dress them up. So here we go. Uh, we've got a make your own gear classic camping pack. And this is what it looks like on the other side where we've tied the top of the duffel bag. Okay? Uh, the next make your own gear project we do, we're going to make Warren Miller's sleeping bag. Not entirely sure when I'm going to be able to get that done here in a couple of weeks. Uh, we're fixing to go out and have Bannermans in the wild. Going to have a camp out, 1920s, 1930s style, classic camping, camping trip. Uh, so I've got to get ready for that. I've got a lot of cleaning and fixing, fixing to, that's how we say it here in Texas, and fixing to go camping. Uh, another announcement I want to make is... Uh, Classic camping is uh, is spreading as far as living history. Classic camping, living history is kind of spreading now. There's a lot of interest being generated. Uh, I'm gratified to see that there are some local groups forming. One of them is the Northwest Vintage Sportsman Facebook group uh, for the Pacific Northwest. Uh, if you are in the PN, uh, PNW, and you are interested in classic camping, join that group, introduce yourself to the folks, get together, go camping. I also want to say that uh, Nathaniel Logsdon uh, just put out uh, a new video on his 20th Century's Adventures Facebook group uh, as your 20th Century Adventures YouTube page. Uh, it's a pretty good one. Uh, Actually, there's two. Go on over there and take a gander at those. So, not quite sure what the next video is going to be or when it's going to be because we do have that uh, fixing to to get to. Otherwise, we'll see you down the trail. <laughs>